Okay, resuming debate, the Honourable Minister of Employment. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it is emotional, and I appreciate the emotion, and I appreciate the discomfort that many workers feel. But I will tell you that we do believe that negotiate, negotiated agreements are always the best solution, Mr. Speaker. In fact, why we believe that is because we believe that when two parties can negotiate together, it results in a strong collective agreement that actually builds and fosters positive labour relations in a corporation. Mr. Speaker, we ran on a commitment to restore fair and balanced labour laws and union management relations, and I remain committed to upholding. Order. Order. I, I'm, I'm trying to hear what the minister has to say, but I'm hearing chatter and shouting across. I just want to remind the honourable members. Order. Order. It's, it's, I, I didn't. I didn't point at any one person. It's the chatter going back and forth that's causing the disturbance. Now, the Honourable Minister, I'd like to hear what she has to say. But, Mr. Speaker, we were also elected to make life better for middle-class Canadians, including small and medium-sized business owners and workers all across Canada. And with this time of year being the busiest retail uh, season, Canadians need to be able to count on Canada Post to deliver the goods that Canadians and businesses need. Let me tell you about Maureen Lyons, the owner of Mo McQueen and Sons in Winnipeg. She's a stay-at-home mom with four children and a health disability, and here's what she had to say about the labour disruption. If by the end of the week, by some miracle, things could resume, or at least the shopping public's faith in the system of delivery could be restored, I think it would help a great deal. We are as grassroots as it gets, she said. I don't make a ton of money as it is. It's so frustrating. We're the little guys. And I'm not just a seller, she said. I'm also trying to find things for my own children for Christmas that I can't get. The Minister of Public Services and Procurement and I have been in touch with the parties directly on numerous occasions to urge them to continue to work towards reaching agreements. And despite all of the efforts that I listed yesterday, the two parties remain unable to find common ground on a number of outstanding issues related to wages, job security and workload. With more than 200 communities across the country directly impacted by the strikes, we can't afford to wait any longer. I will repeat, our government does not take back-to-work legislation lightly. This is the first time that our government is using this tool, and we believe it should only be used as a last resort. And that belief has not changed for me personally or for our government. However, having exhausted all other possibilities, we believe it's the only remaining option. This is about protecting the public interest and avoiding further harm to Canadian businesses and communities and indeed Canadians who rely on Canada Post. Older Canadians, persons with disabilities, low-income earners, as well as Canadians living in rural, remote and northern areas, Mr. Speaker, who rely on physical mail delivery, including Indigenous peoples in some of the most remote communities of our country, are disproportionately affected when their access to physical mail delivery is disrupted. The cost of postal alternatives, such as courier companies, can be prohibitively high, especially in rural and remote communities. In some remote northern areas, there are no alternatives, and Canadians in the north are twice as reliant on parcel delivery services than the rest of Canadians. Stephanie Destry of the Silk Road Spice Merchant in Calgary says sometimes we ship to more rural places, so we go with Canada Post. We're finding delays when we use the Can when Canada Post, and sometimes up to three weeks of delays. And a Toronto Star reader sent the following letter to the editor. While mail disruption is an inconvenience to many of us living in Canada, it's an impossible situation for those in remote fly-in communities in northern Canada. Unlike other Canadians, he said, who have options of private courier services, those living in, th in these regions must rely on Canada Post for all of their deliveries. Through a, through a newly formed not-for-profit organization, this person continued, I am personally involved in sending much-needed food to shelters and soup kitchens, <laughs> warm clothing to the homeless, to poor and elderly, school supplies and food to daycares and schools in both Nunavut and Northwest Territories. And for many of these children, these will be the only gifts they receive this year. 
The postal strike has played havoc with our efforts to get these gifts to children in time for Christmas. Besides the time delays and the uncertainty of delivery, there is an additional expense of about $1,000 to upgrade our service level to Express Post in the hope that these parcels will receive faster service when the strike action rotates. And weather is always a concern in the winter in getting parcels to the north in a timely manner, but the strikes have made it incredibly difficult and challenging. This is Beverly Mitchell from Toronto. Nearly 9 million Canadians, about 30 per cent of our population, live in rural and remote areas where access to the internet can be extremely limited. And today is Black Friday, and so many businesses depend on their sales today and through to the end of the holiday season to survive. This is real human impact. Small business owners are our neighbours, and they're also significant employers in our country. And so we're looking at job losses and lower hours at a time of year when so many families are already overextended. We have Indigenous populations in very small and sometimes isolated communities, says Danahy, CEO of Customer Lab. Sometimes these isolated communities are so isolated that you can only reach them by water and air. So in those cases, the local economies can be hit quite significantly. At the same time, Mr. Speaker, our reputation as a reliable market for commerce and trade is at risk because international partners aren't able to ship mail and parcel, parcel uh, shipments to, onto Canada Post. I spoke yesterday about smaller e-sellers whose razor-thin margins leave many of them unable to afford the higher cost of shipping through courier companies. In the event of a lengthy postal strike, many companies, particularly smaller e-commerce companies, may not make it through the season. 40% of online sales take place in the fourth quarter, which the strike is currently impacting. Mr. Speaker, Canadians expect us to act. We have done everything we could, and this is a last resort. And that's why we're introducing this legislation, which I'm going to take a few minutes to explain. The legislation we're introducing today will order an immediate end to the work stoppages and the resumption and continuation of postal services at noon EST on the day after the day on which it receives royal assent. The most recent collective agreements will be extended until new collective agreements are established. And to help the parties find common ground on outstanding issues, an impartial mediator arbitrator will be appointed. The parties will have an opportunity to choose the mediator arbitrator. And within 48 hours of coming into force of the bill, the parties will need to provide me with names of three persons to serve as the mediator arbitrator. If the parties fail to propose the same person, one will be appointed from this list, taking into consideration advice from the chairperson of the Canada Industrial Relations Board. This is to ensure the impartiality of the individual who will be chosen. The legislation will provide for the mediator arbitrator to resolve all outstanding issues through mediation or, if mediation fails on particular issues, arbitrate them through an arbitration model of his or her choice based on guiding principles. And the mediator arbitrator will have seven days to mediate all outstanding issues between the parties, which can be extended to a maximum of 14 days if the parties consent. If the parties fail to reach agreements when, within the mediation period, the mediator arbitrator must arbitrate all outstanding issues within 90 days of his or her appointment. Now, Mr. Speaker, let me talk about the principles that will guide the mediator arbitrator's decisions, in, and, and, and these have been crafted carefully to provide a balance to the mediator arbitrator and take into consideration the concerns that we've heard throughout the negotiating process. They are to ensure the health and safety of all employees to ensure the fair treatment of temporary, part-time and other employees in non-standard employment as compared to full-time permanent employees, to ensure the long-term financial sustainability of Canada Post, to create a culture of collaborative labour management relations, and for high-quality service to be provided by Canada Post at a reasonable price to Canadians. Now, the Union and Canada Post can reach a voluntary agreement at any time before the mediator arbitrator submits his or her final report to me, which would end the mediation arbitration process. Mr. Speaker, I believe that we have taken the steps to ensure that everything, is, everything possible has been done uh, and, and is done through this legislation to encourage the parties to reach agreement fairly and swiftly, while in the meantime ensure services at Canada Post resume, preventing further harm. And that's why I urge all my honourable colleagues to vote in support of this legislation. Mr. Speaker, I want to reiterate that our government does not take this legislation lightly. We've worked hard to restore fairness and balance to the labour landscape in Canada since coming into office. 
Through Bill C-4, our government's first piece of legislation and our first official act in Parliament, we repealed two private members' bills that undermined unions, one that imposed excessive reporting requirements on unions and a second that made it harder for workers to unionize. And since then, we've introduced legislation and programs that improve the lives of Canadian workers and strengthen the labour movement. And as I mentioned before, we did not intervene early because we believe in the collective bargaining process. We believe that the collective bargaining process results in the best outcomes, strong agreements and a positive workplace culture. But we also have a responsibility to Canadians, Mr. Speaker, and to the businesses that drive our economy. And when the consequences of a work stoppage become so great that they begin to result in serious and, if left unchecked, lasting harm, we have to act. So we will continue to support the parties through every means possible, as we've done from the very beginning, Mr. Speaker, and we strongly encourage them to reach agreements as soon as possible, and we will continue to provide the parties with the tools they need to do so. And as I said earlier, the best agreements are always the ones that parties arrive at themselves. This legislation allows the parties to reach a voluntary agreement at any time before the mediator arbitrator submits his final report to the minister, which would end the mediation arbitration process. Mr. Speaker, we are in no way legislating agree an agreement. This legislation is about ensuring the process exists to find one. The well-being of Canadians and the viability of many Canadian businesses depend on a speedy resolution. I urge everyone in this House to support this legislation so we can make that happen as quickly as possible. Canadians are counting on us, Mr. Speaker.